Hello everybody. Now I will try to discuss the remaining part of the uh, heat conduction. So far we, uh, uh, we consider the basics of the heat conduction in terms of the Fourier's law of heat conduction and the different thermal properties associated with the material. Now we will try to discuss in the application of the heat flow specifically for the one dimensional heat flow in a steady state situation. So we take a very basic example is the application of the Fourier's law of the heat conduction. We take a uh, plane wall and this wall is having the length L, I can say the thickness L and start this is the direction X, you can mention this one and the this side is the hot, the high temperature is this side, the hot temperature, higher temperature and other side is the lower temperature. T2 is the cold side and this is the hot side of this wall. So, we are assuming the heat transfer occurs along the X direction that means one dimension and then we can say the heat flow because heat flow uh, QK we can it is a vector quantity so heat flow in that particular x direction we can K and heat flow will occur uh, this particular direction that is indicated in this uh, figure. So from higher temperature to lower temperature. Now how we can apply the Fourier's law of heat conduction in this cases and we are assuming the steady state means that there is no time component associated with this analysis. So Fourier's law of the heat conduction we can say the heat flux in terms of the heat flux the per unit area uk equal to minus k into dt by dx that we know. We just simply implement this uk represents the heat flux by conduction. Now at x equal to 0 here at x equal to 0 time at temperature equal to T1 at x equal to L at the, that means over the thickness the here temperature equal to T2. So we put these conditions here the uk uh, into dx uk into dx equal to minus T1 by T2 k into dt. So here dx 0 to L because x is varying from starting from the 0 and here x equal to L here. So x equal to 0 to L put dx and temperature is varying from T1 to T2. So T1 to T2 is varying k dt. Now we perform this integration and you can see that qk we can calculate minus k into T2 minus T1 by L. We can simply calculate this one or qk equal to k into T1 minus T2 into L. So, it is basically calculating the heat flux or heat flow uh, through the wall from higher temperature to the lower temperature. This is simple calculation we can say. So, by applying the Fourier's law of heat conduction here. Now, if A is the surface area normal to the heat flow, we can further modify this thing. Say we are assuming the surface area. So, in that case, rate of the heat transfer can be write that QK equal to QK the flux, flux means per unit area multiply by the cross section area then K, K into A T1 minus T2 by L further modify that the total rate of the heat transfer in this case. Now mathematically for the heat fluxes we can see that Fourier's law QK equal to minus K into DT by DX. So here QK by K equal to minus DT by DX. Now you can see that for the same QK value that means flux is this is the same value. Now we can see that K is low. K is low means thermal conductivity is very low. It means that it is an insulating material. When thermal conductivity is very low, in that cases that thermal gradient will be very high. If this is the K is the lower side for the same value, remember QK is the same. So K is the lower side, then thermal gradient will be very high. If K is the higher side, K is high, it means that K high means that it is a conductor, good conductor of the heat. So therefore, K is very high means thermal gradient will be less in this case. So we can see the insulator, the to reach the thermal gradient will be very high T minus T1 and in this cases conductor the thermal gradient will be less. So definitely in this cases suppose it is reaching the T1 temperature with the same apply of the heat flux and in this cases it is the temperature T2. So definitely thermal gradient will be high means the difference between the T1 minus T will be very high. So here this should be greater than uh, T2. Now we can see the units of QK should be what we remember area meter square K should be what per meter Kelvin and temperature either degree centigrade or it can be uh, K also. Now we try to look into the electrical analogy of the heat flow. So that will be easier to understand this is because you know on these things if you follow the current flow Ohm's law this is the value the voltage current and resistance. We can calculate the electrical resistance the V i equal to V by R the current flow equal to V by R. So current flow depends on the what is the voltage or I can say the potential difference exists 
in the system the flow of the current depends on this thing as well as the flow of the current depends on the resistance of the this thing so similar kind of the analogy electrical resistance analogy we can apply in case of the heat flow also so heat flow we can say the schematic diagram this is the length l so higher temperature side going to the temperature and heat flow is the valid throughout this cross section that is qk and here we can see we can follow this formula that we have already this started this thing that you are aware of this thing this thing the electrical resistance now you try to represent the heat flow in the similar way that total heat flow equal to qka t1 minus t2 by l we have already calculated now qk can be represented t1 minus t2 l by k into a so qk equal to t1 minus t2 l by k into k we can represent this is the rk rk is the we can say this is the thermal resistance and offered by the wall in this particular wall the total thermal resistance is represented by r l by k a so the thermal resistance and t1 minus t2 is the potential difference in case of electrical uh, current flow we can represent the voltage or potential difference but in this case is the which is equivalent to the thermal analysis that is the temperature difference that is the equivalent to the potential difference the thermal te temperature difference is much more it actually affects the heat flow so that's why the potential differences here which is equivalent to v and here rk is equivalent to r in case analysis and qk is basically equivalent to i in case of the electric current flow now this way we represent this thing so i can say that here rk thermal resistance equal to l the thickness as well as the depends on the k into a so thermal conductivity and cross section area but cross, remember this cross section area is the normal to the heat flow direction this is the cross section area we have to consider and here the circuit we represent the qk the flow which is equivalent to current i here and rk is equal to the r and t1 is the potential difference t2 t2 minus t1 or t1 minus t2 is the potential difference in this case now for any materials the conductivity can also be defined as a function of temperature also because definitely conductivity varies the, its property as a function of temperature that also represented but this is the different aspect now we try to discuss the electrical analogy of the heat flow now we take an example of the composite wall the electrical energy of heat flow can also be applicable in a composite wall for example there is a wall the thickness l1 l2 and l3 is arranged in this cases and we are neglecting the interface resistance between these two between the wall we are not considering no no interface resistance exists between the two walls now where for uh, there is a current uh, the heat flow occurs so this is the for this particular wall thermal resistance is r1 second wall thermal resistance is r2 and third wall thermal resistance is r3 and you can see the heat flow occurs in this direction so so we can say that it is a serially connected so serially connected so total resistance will be the r equal to r1 plus r2 plus r3 but in this case the r1 we can do the l1 by k1 a so, so first wall r2 the thermal resistance will be l2 by k2 a the second wall and r3 will be l3 by k3 a this is the thermal resistance for the wall so total resistance can be calculated r equal to r1 plus r2 plus r3 we can calculate here this will and we can see the thermal analysis what we have just discussed now this is the series arrangement so now heat flow might occurs that in the parallel arrangement also suppose these are the three different wall they are parallelly arranged having the thermal conductivity k1 k2 and k3 the thickness of the wall is l but heat flow direction is this one so here clearly mentioned this is the heat flow direction qk so heat flow direction will be, it will be shear by the some heat flow will occur through this first wall the second wall and third wall also all of the total heat flow will be the shear in this case so now thermal resistance can be like that so here temperature t1 one sided and temperature t2 is the other side now the thermal resistance r1 r2 and r3 they are parallelly connected and in this case we can say that 1 by r equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 so this we can simply apply here for the thermal analysis now uh, this will take an example also to understand all this uh, this heat conduction or serially and parallelly connected in case of the heat flow analysis so consider one metallic rod of 0.5 meter length cross section area 0.02 meter square temperature difference 150 degree centigrade across the end thermal conductivity is given 200 watt per meter kelvin calculate the rate of the heat transfer through the rod we can calculate 
simple calculation we can see is just simply apply the Fourier's law of the heat conduction Q k equal to k a T 1 minus T 2 by L. So, here k is given uh, temperature difference already given. So, T 1 minus T 2 equal to 150 degree centigrade. Now, cross section area 0 0.02 length is given. All we put this and getting this value Q k equal to 1200 watt. Remember the unit of the Q k equal to 1200 watt. So, this is simple calculation we can do. Now, here we can see the calculate the overall thermal resistance offered by the following combination of the wall. So, three different wall, they are three different thermal conductivities are there, their thickness also different. In this case, what can be the total thermal resistance? The cross section area, remember the cross section area is this one, 0 0.1 meter square and value is given. So, R1 equal to L by the K1 into A. Similarly, R2 equal to K2 uh, here L by K2 into A. Uh, L by uh, L3 by K3 into A. So, we can calculate and we can find out the total resistance equal to R1 plus R2 because these are the serially connected and we understand the looking into the heat flow direction we can understand whether it is serially connected or parallelly connected. So, R is this one total resistance R1 plus R2 plus R3 we can calculate the R values and finally, R becomes the 2.3 into the minus 3 Kelvin R watt this is the thermal resistance for the combination of the wall. Now, we can look into the heat conduction in the radial direction through a cylindrical body. So, if we consider this is the cylindrical body and the heat conduction occurs uh, through the radial direction. So, here the radial direction and we can take uh, uh, we, we, this is the, uh, the heat transfer from occurs from this point to this point for example along this radial direction if we consider heat transfer rate of the heat transfer how to calculate this thing. So, at a distance from here at a distance r we can see this is the elemental thickness uh, elemental is the dr and that is x1 or this thing. But initially radial is the in this case is the in internal radius r1 external radial equal to r2 for the cylindrical body. Now, we are interested to heat transfer through this solid body along the radial direction of a cylindrical component. Now, definitely steady state heat conduction is considered and it is uh, we consider the heat transfer across only the radial direction and we are neglect um, that means we are trying to well, other direction we are not considering the heat transfer here. Now, we simply apply the Fourier's law of the heat conduction the Q k equal to minus k a dt by dx in this case. So, Q k equal to minus k a dt by dx temperature gradient but in this case is dt by dr because this is the elemental equivalent to the elemental thickness here. So, if you remember when you analyze the wall uh, we can consider this is a dx and temperature difference between 2 equal to dt. And similarly, here the temp elemental distance is dr and temperature difference between these 2 equal to dt. So, that is why you can do dt by dr. Now, radial direction is following the heat occurs. So, we can consider this area the area should be in the surrounding this area total area. So, area equal to twice pi r the twice pi r this is the total length and the normal to that is the other length this is the length of the cylinder. So, l into twice pi r into l that represents the total surface area uh, which is normal to the heat flow direction and this one. So, twice pi r into l into k dt by dr. Now, perform the integration the temperature is varying from T1 to T2 dt in this case uh, okay. and the R is varying from R1 to R2. So, in internal radial distance to the R2. So, that is R1 to R2 minus QK twice pi KL dr by R. If we perform this one T2 minus T1 equal to minus QK twice pi KL the R is the only variable here logarithm of R2 by R1. So, finally, we are getting QK equal to twice pi KL T1 minus T2 logarithm of R2 by R1. So, here you can see some simplify that it is a QK equal to T1 minus T2 potential difference and remaining we put in terms of the resistance thermal resistance. But when you put it then thermal resistance uh, can be like that that ln R2 by R1 divided by twice pi K L this is the thermal resistance in this case. So, it should be TH thermal resistance. So, here we can see the expression for the thermal resistance when there is a radial heat transfer occurs in a cylindrical body which is different from the plane wall the because plane wall we calculated L by K into cross section area. But here you can see the logarithm of R2 by R1 by twice pi KL. 
So, this expression we are getting for the thermal resistance in case of the cylindrical body. Now, rearranging the above equation, we can see that just we can see the QK R2 minus R1, we just introduce top uh, numerator uh, denominator side and numerator, numerator denominator both side we can introduce R2 minus R1 multiply a logarithm R2 minus by R1, we can introduce the 2i pi into L, 2i pi into L. Then we can represent that k equal to is basically twice pi r2 into l r2 into l that is a2 and twice pi r1 into l that represents the a1 t1 by t2 and here the logarithm of r2 by uh, r1 in this case and k is already here included here and this is the this is r2 by r1 so finally we are getting minus k into a2 by a, a2 minus a1 by ln a2 by uh, a1 that represents the uh, lm a lm equivalent to and t1 minus t2 is uh, we are uh, changing the minus we have already given the minus sign so here representing that t2 minus t1 um, uh, and a, r2 by r1 the thickness which is the wall thickness equivalent to xw we have written here now here we can see that it is equivalent to the, the Fourier's law representing the equivalent form of the law of equation because minus k a dt by dx so temperature depends by the thickness of the wall. So, here but a l m equivalent uh, it is the basically log mean area in this case. So, a 2 by a 1 but logarithm of a 2 by a 1 a, a 1. So, this is usually called the log mean area. So, in, in this case, so log here on the cylindrical heat, the radial heat transfer occurs, then minus k into log mean area and this we have to consider here instead of the plane area normal to the surface. Now, here from equation, we rearrange the equation 1, we can see that dt equal to temperature depends, depends on the qk twice pi kl dr by r. So, that if, if we consider this as a constant c1 in, equal to dr by r. So, temperature is basically varying in the logarithm way. So, temperature is a function of t equal to c1 into ln r plus c2. So, temperature distribution is the logarithm along the wall thickness. So, here we can see temperature along the wall thickness, temperature distribution is basically follow the logarithm equation. So, in case of the, the radial heat transfer for a cylindrical body. Now, heat conduction through a sphere. So, when you try to analyze the heat flow through a thin spherical cell and thin spherical cell at a distance uh, radial distance r we can say the elemental distance dr thin cell and the temperature t1 is the inside and outside temperature t2 and through the so temperature t1 inside uh, outside temperature t2 but sphere in its diamond uh, radius r1 and corresponding to here t2 equal to r2 now heat flow through a very thin cell we apply the Fourier's law q equal to k dt by dx but in this case minus k into a dt by dr. Now a is the area of the cell at the radial distance r. So at the radial distance area of the cell q equal to you know the surface area equal to 4 pi r square. So a equal to 4 pi r square at a distance r this is the cell area. So here k into 4 pi r square we have written here into dt by dr. Now we can see the dt the dt equal to minus qk by 4 pi k dr by r square here. So, the limit should be t1 to t2 corresponding to r1 to r2. So, t1 to t2 r1 to r2 we can do it and we can calculate temperature difference t2 by t1 this case is dr by r square. So, qk by does 4 pi k because this is a constant term 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 if we perform the integration we are getting the temperature difference this one. Now, once you get the temperature difference this one, so we can rearrange the qk from here the qk equal to 4 pi k t1 by t2 r1 r2 by r2 minus r1. The similar expression minus q equal to k a dt by dx in that form we will try to represent the k is given minus a is the equivalent area the rearrange this thing then t2 is the temperature difference and the thickness. So, but if you look into the area a, a m here we can see the area is basically equivalent to the geometric mean area the when there is a heat conduction occurs through a sphere. So, if the square root of a 1 by a 2 we know geometric mean area is the, the square root of uh, is basically square root of a 1 a 2 the a 1 corresponds to this is correspond to area a 1 corresponds to area a 2. Now, area 
4 pi r1 square 4 pi r2 square square root of that basically 4 pi r r1 r2 so that's so it is getting we are getting the 4 pi r1 r2 and uh, r2 by um, x double equal to r2 by r1 so this is the other way to represent this thing so we observe that uh, in case of the uh, sphere the heat conduction occurs through a sphere then we need to consider the equivalent area is basically the geometric main area and on other cases cylindrical cases we consider the logarithm mean area so we can compare this way the thermal resistance provided by the different there is a change in the geometry we can say that thermal resistance are different in this case qk equal to t1 by t2 by rk uh, in case of the plate uh, in that case definitely t1 greater than t2 and rk is the thermal resistance but rk thermal resistance indicate of the plane surface of the plane wall or uh, in that cases should be l by k into a so l equal to the thickness of the wall and a is the cross section area and k is the thermal conductivity so this is the l value and this is the cross section area this side normal to the heat flow direction and this is the heat flow direction so here the thermal is l by k into a but when it is considered the cylinder we can say the r k equal to x by k into a l m so here x is the wall thickness is basically different at radial distance r2 minus r1 and k into area here also area but k into area but here area is the logarithm mean area so logarithm mean area a2 minus a1 by logarithm of a2 by a1 similarly if the geometry is a sphere in that case the thermal resistance can be represented like that the difference r2 minus r1 thickness that means here equivalent to l and thickness x by k into a k in the area k into geometric mean area so here geometric mean area equal to 4 pi r1 r2 so this way we can see easily distinguish the difference of the thermal resistance when there is a heat transfer occurs at the different geometric shapes but common when you try to estimate the thermal resistance is basically we, we can remember the l into k into a so l is the thickness k is the thermal conductivity a is the area so in that case plane area in case of the cylinder it is a logarithm mean area in case of the sphere it should be the geometric mean area that will be the difference to understand the thermal resistance for the different geometric shape some problem we can look into the calculate the amount of the heat transfer from a circular copper tube so circular copper tube is there of a car radiator containing the hot coolant at the temperature of 800 degree centigrade so 800 degree centigrade is there and consider the inner diameter of the tube is given 10 millimeter and has a thickness of the 2 millimeter the length total length of the tube is 2 meters long assuming the outer surface temperature is of the tube is 75 degree centigrade and inner is the 80 degree centigrade which remains constant throughout the length so throughout the length of the tube it remains the constant the thermal conductivity of the copper is given 400 401 watt per meter kelvin and the inner surface temperature equal to the coolant uh, temperature so uh, in this case how to calculate the the amount of the heat transfer from the circular copper tube so we can simply follow in this cases the we can say it's a equivalent to the the heat transfer for a cylindrical element a radial heat transfer so we can e simply say that uh, total heat transfer equal to potential difference that t1 minus t2 temperature difference by thermal resistance in this case so temperature difference by the thermal resistance which is equivalent to i equal to say v by r if you remember i equal to v by r then we can simply apply these things so what, but here in this case is the heat flow and the electrical analysis we follow the current flow and temperature voltage here equivalent to the temperature difference now if you now we have to calculate the rth so rth for the calculation we can see we can remember the rth uh, thermal resistance in case of the cylindrical component equal to the the length x by k into a but a is the here is the logarithm mean area logarithm mean if you put it then it is because ln r2 by r1 by twice by kl we can put it and you can calculate thermal resistance here and once you calculate the thermal resistance then we can calculate what is the values of the qk the temperature difference by the thermal resistance put it so basically 
this is the amount of the heat flow 74.8 kilowatt in this particular problem. So, I mean to say that what we are doing all this analysis because so rather than remembering memorizing all these things you can simply start it with the heat transfer rate of the heat transfer simply understanding the temperature difference and the thermal resistance. Now, think about ge geometric shape of this particular component then we can calculate the thermal resistance that three different cases whether it is a cylindrical element, spherical element or it is a plane wall. Based on that we can calculate the thermal resistance and we can easily then you can estimate the total heat transfer uh, in, in this case. We can look into the another problem also. Laser heating source of the 10 watt is used for the surface heating of the iron plate. So, it is very basically 10 watt is interacting on the surface heating of the iron plate having an exposed area of the 2 millimeter square under the laser. So, total surface area is basically 2 millimeter square and laser is interacting on the surface. Thickness of the plate 4 millimeter is given. Assuming the surface temperature is 900 degree centigrade, the surface, surface temperature is 900 degree centigrade and heat transfer takes place along the thickness only. So, thickness direction heat transfer takes place. Calculate the surface temperature on the other side. So, here assuming that this surface temperature is uniform throughout this surface and suppose the other surface temperature equal to T, the, this surface temperature. Now, we have to calculate this thing. So, here we can say simply Q equal to K a plane wall basically, but cross section area may be different that T1 minus T2 by L, K a temperature difference by L, this formula Fourier's law and from here we can find out the QK also given 10 and conductivity surface area is given and 1 T1 is given, but T2 is not given here and L also given. So, we can from here simply calculate what is the values of the T, t here. This simply application of the Fourier's law of the heat conduction, but for a plane wall. So, just looking into the problem, you need to understand what kind of the uh, what kind of the geometry we are considering and based on that we can apply the formula of the heat conduction uh, in this particular case. Now, once you discuss about the heat conduction then to some extent there is a another mode of the heat transfer that is the convective heat transfer. So, convective heat transfer also important and this may most of the manufacturing problems say casting welding this mode of the heat transfer conductive uh, combina combination of the conduction convection as well as the radiation. Now, to understand the convective mode of the heat transfer in this case we can see the mechanism of the heat transfer in which the mass movement of the uh, fluids due to the temperature difference. So, heat will be conducted by the movement of the mass from one position to the another position and that will be carried away the heat, uh, heat will be transported because of the movement of the fluid and you can see the mass movement of the fluid and of course, there must be some temperature difference between the uh, say T infinity is the surrounding temperature and T w is the temperature of the hot plate for example. And if the mass movement is produced by the density differences, variation in the density due to the temperature difference, then we can say it is natural or free convection. So, this is known as the free or the natural convection. So, in this case, so this is the heated plate is there having Tw temperature, Tw temperature get on the, the surrounding temperature. So, surrounding is, is by some fluid or maybe surrounded by the air also. So, when there is a temperature difference exist, then some density difference might be exist between these two and due to the temperature difference then naturally liquid mass transport will occur from one position to the another position. So, when mass transport occur it will carry the heat. So, in that case is the convective mode of the heat transfer occurs which is called the natural convection. But sometimes if the motion of the fluid is basically externally added with the external devices then this process is known as the force convection. For example, if we simply put a fan fan and the flowing the air is basically force circulation throughout the plate of this thing and there is a temperature differences. In this case when the forcefully we are trying to transport the this bulk uh, fluid motion and with the external devices then it will also carry the heat. So, more the rate of the heat loss will be in this case is much more, but this type of the uh, convective mode of the heat transfer is known as the forced convection. So, both the way the it is applicable in case of the uh, any manufacturing processes specifically the casting welding processes to modify the rate of the heat transfer uh, that may be useful impact of the their microstructure development uh, in a in during the manufacturing that is what is necessary to understand. Now, we can see that flow of the fluid adjacent to the wall definitely create the boundary layer also velocity this is the say this is the hot surface and this is the 
this u infinity is the natural flow field magnitude of the flow velocity of the flow of the the fluid here but when the there is a some when you close to the wall the this velocity flow there is some frictional resistance will be there so it may not the that the at the interface it may not the available to uh, exactly following the the free stream velocity uh, uh, in this particular case so then velocity will be gradually reaching to the free stream velocity but here the we can start at the zero velocity to so gradually reaching to the free stream velocity so basically uh, near about the hot surface so that create the velocity boundary layer or as well as the thermal boundary layer will also be created because this is the hot surface it is having certain temperature but away from this thing the fluid having the free stream temperature in this is the temperature of the fluid medium and uh, the initial temperature of the fluid medium but when it is in contact with the hot surface the certain zone that it will try to it will take some certain dimension to reach or to uh, converge to the the free stream temperature or free stream velocity so up to this distance this is the this is called as the uh, boundary layer so thickness of the boundary layer is mathematically defined that the distance from the wall where the fluid velocity is the 99 percent of the free stream velocity so it's a gradually if you changing the velocity it's a zero and gradually velocity increases um, and gradually reach to the free stream velocity so certain distance when reaching the free stream velocity mathematically is 99 percent of the free stream velocity up to that distance we can say this is the boundary layer and this is applicable in case of the both for velocity profile as well as the in case of the temperature profile so also a temperature boundary layer and the velocity boundary layer now by the loss of the heat from the surface is basically governed by the convective heat transfer calculated by the newton's law of cooling in this case we can see the loss of the heat can be calculated equal to qc equal to hc into a tw the fluid temperature and the t infinity. so tw is the hot surface temperature at t infinity is the temperature so here also there is a temperature difference between the hot surface and the surrounding medium and that temperature difference is governed the heat transfer and that is a that is the newton's law of cooling and that is the i can say the heat loss by convection here so but here the we can see the the convective heat transfer coefficient ac so if you remember the when the conductive heat mode of the heat transfer we can say that ka t1 minus t2 by l like that but in this cases here the ac k replaced by the ac cross section area is there but tw the temperature defines but here the temperature gradient so the, the here ac is called the heat transfer coefficient but heat transfer coefficient is defined when you are analyzing the convective mode of the heat transfer and here also temperature difference is there but does not depend on the uh, thickness or uh, in the because conduction mode of the heat it depends on the thickness but here different heat transfer uh, coefficient so from here you can easily calculate what is the value of the heat transfer coefficient i think watt per meter square kelvin can be the watt ac but k was the watt per meter kelvin so one dimension uh, this in the there is a difference of the units of the heat transfer coefficient and the thermal conductivity in this uh, these two cases so we will try to apply this heat transfer when mode of heat loss by the convection then we will try to utilize the newton's law of cooling here I think here we just analyze the different mode of the heat transfer and how it is applicable uh, this thing uh, in, a, in a very typical application and we try to understand the simple calculation heat transfer analysis in this particular uh, module. I think it will be helpful to further explore this thing when you try to analyze in actual manufacturing process. So that's all. Thank you very much for your kind attention.